But what I would like to ask is, how do you justify appearing on a radio show hosted by Dr Kevin Barrett, who is an anti-Semite? It could well be that Kevin Barrett said something like, I have doubts about the numbers quoted in the Holocaust. It's just it's off, off topic. It's, it's off not topic. topic. It's, it's, talk about it's, the Holocaust. Yeah. When we're supposed to be here talking about 9-11 being it's an inside job. This is it's ad hominem attack. Abuse. You're trying to attack somebody based upon it's association. Hitler may have liked pizza. I like pizza. Am I Hitler? <laughs> That's a very poor argument. Uh, he can appear on any TV show he wants to get his message across. He is not responsible for Kevin Barrett's opinions. <laughs> Dismiss this man's opinions based upon something that is on this, or totally off topic. This, this, this is, is a dirty trick that's been Excuse carried me. out too often in the past. His point is valid. This is a debate on 9-11. We are here to discuss 9-11, not the Holocaust. Do you have specific examples of sources that you would like to question Ian Henshaw about regarding 9-11, not the Holocaust? Well, I mean, it's, it's just the sources that he draws from, essentially, from Dr. Kevin Barrett, for example. All, okay. all my talk on 9-11 was entirely drawn from mainstream sources. I've got no idea what Kevin Barrett says about lots of... Kevin Barrett is a radio interviewer who asked me to give my opinions. Uh, I've gi I give him my opinions about 9-11. The important thing is, is to uh, bring what I believe to be true information to the public any way I can. I'd be delighted to go on the BBC if they'd have me. I have actually been on the BBC locally. Um, I don't know where you got this idea. The, the Smith, I've never heard such a stream <laughs> of, of, of ad hominem attacks. Uh, the whole phrase conspiracy theorist was that you could you, you choose who you're calling a conspiracy theorist, mm -hmm. then you bunch them together in a group. And any one person in that group that you want to attack, you cite the opinions of a different person in that group. The presentation was based on one single aspect, and that is, I simply cannot believe it. That's what runs through all his, what he said, I just can't believe it. And to that I must say that my convictions and my conclusions are based on observations, on evidence, on data, and uh, your lack of imagination is not among my premises. Well, my question is, I have two questions for you. Mm -hmm. The first one is a very simple one. Do you believe that the United States was attacked by 19 young Muslims under the guidance of Osama bin Laden on September 11, 2001? Yes. Why? Because Osama bin Laden went on TV and actually said it. That's Which is not true. not true. Come I can on, are you seriously suggesting that the CIA would actually, in, that would actually say that? I, Come yes. on. You are a law student. Yes. Yes. You are a student of, of law. Okay, you believe in the rule of law. Yes. Do you believe that a man is innocent until proven guilty? Yes, but when Do he you believe to that a crime should be investigated as a crime? Yes. Do you believe that the trial which is coming up should be based on evidence, forensic evidence? Yes. So what is the forensic evidence for you believing that Osama bin Laden is guilty? The forensic evidence, at least. Um, Betty Ong's 911 call, she clearly stated within that call, this was made from Flight 11, and she clearly stated within that call that there were hijackers on board and that they had stabbed the crew. She clearly said that. She's, it, it's, that's not even deniable. Again, go on YouTube, look it up. Betty Ong's 911 call. There was, there was also the call by Todd Beamer on board, said exactly the same thing. There are hijackers and we might have to go and take the plane. That was, so that is clear forensic evidence. Well, one problem is that you cannot telephone from a cell phone under these circumstances. Of course you can. The, the quality of the, the call was far too clear to be a genuine hijack. She was very calm in this call and there was no sounds of any description behind her. So now, if you get her voice exactly right. Are you That's trying to saying. tell me that yeah, a, a, a phone call from an aircraft flying over a rural area at high altitude could, re could result in such clarity, and also there would be no background noises from screaming passengers who were about to die? No, 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 that was a fake call. That was a fake call, just like some of the other uh, calls we heard, for example, the air traffic control call, which was made to ATC, and somebody there who was speaking in a very distinctive Middle Eastern accent. 
You know, Osama bin Laden was never wanted by the FBI for this crime. He was never wanted, it's true. So in 2005, a journalist he called the FBI to, and asked them, how come you do not want Osama bin Laden for this? And the official spokesperson for the FBI, he said, this is because FBI does not have any hard evidence connecting Osama bin Laden to 9-11. In 1993, Osama bin Laden declared war openly on the United States. You know that. It's it in does the not make report. him guilty, man. You're a student of law. Yes, exactly. So you don't, see his investigation? you don't see his confessions as evidence. He confessed to the crime. The testimony to the court in the Massawi trial confirmed that, that there weren't very many actual real phone calls made or received at all. Most of the ones that they acknowledged came from onboard air phones, which were working, but most of the planes didn't have the onboard air phones. Um, it's a mystery as to how the on phone call could have got through. According to the 9-11 Commission, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was actually the ringleader, not Osama bin Laden. Khalid, and that, that is now the official story, it's one of the very major ways in which the official story has changed. Everywhere. That will be everywhere. No, no, it's, it is everywhere, you'll, you'll see it. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is now regarded as the ringleader. It's there in the 9-11 Commission report to some extent, but they've gone much further in that direction since, in the years since. Um, and, and I think uh, what Osama bin Laden has been taking credit for it, he talks about our people, but he doesn't necessarily mean people under my command. What he means is the sort of angry Muslims, um, that's what he means by saying our people. Um, and the, 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 the going on TV that you mentioned is a video that the Americans found in Afghanistan which has Osama bin Laden apparently confessing to 9-11 and talking about the collapse of the towers and so on. It's disputed not only as to whether it really was Osama bin Laden, but as to the translation of what he was saying. And once again, it gets back to this issue of what does he mean by our people and what does he mean by us. This, this is the thing with 9-11 conspiracy theorists. When you actually, or, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to use that title correctly. If well, I'm it is abusive, but, and I, have, I am on record as threatening to sue people for libel for that. It's okay, well, like saying well, that. <laughs> well, so, it is abusive, isn't okay, it? Before, if you ever use it as a term of abuse. Well, before we get into lawsuits, all I was doing was quoting David Aronovich on that. I'm yeah. not suggesting, well, you can take it as you leave it, take it, leave it, do what you like. But... All I was quoting there was David Aronovich, and it does raise questions. That's all I was saying. What are your grounds for suspicion on that? Exactly? Well, it's been attacked, as I said, it's been attacked on the translation. Yes. And it's been attacked on the veracity of whether it was a song with Bin Laden. It's not just the one video. There's actually about four videos of him doing this. Yeah, there's a that there's that's perfectly true, and there's also <coughs> audios which, which are claimed to be his. So all all one, of those one, are one cautionary point. No, it's the same issue as what he means by our people. Um, but personally, I don't think it's that relevant anyway, because I think the point is that the CIA left the door open quite deliberately, and that that's been now converted, as you heard in my speech. But, um, but yeah. That, that's, but the that's, CIA, I mean, that's a massive organisation that you just implicated. How many people are in on this? No, as, as I said also in my speech, I'm talking about that's loose speaking. What I meant was a tightly knit group running an operation within the CIA name names. operations. Name one. Oh yeah, name, name, names. Me, name me names. George Tanner, Kofa Black, and there's a series of more junior ones the names I don't actually have to hand. Okay. It's been very well analysed by in a book <coughs> called Disconnecting the Dots. He's read all the Inspector General's reports, <coughs> he's read all the Congressional, he's read the 9-11 Commission report, and he can tell you exactly how the CIA allowed those guys into America. Well, within your speech, you also, sorry, um, I just want to say, you not only implicate the CIA, you implicate the FBI, you implicate the US government. Individuals is, uh, within. Within each, the US each time you say that, individuals okay. within, yes. Okay, individuals within yeah. the Bush administration, yeah. effectively. Yeah, individuals. So, how many people do you think are involved in this? That's my question to you. If I... you we're talking compartmentalised operations. Um, the people who put the explosives in the Twin Towers would not have known what the purpose was. They'd have thought it was a precaution or something like that. Um, the people who let the, the, the terrorists into America would not have known that it was to enable them to con conduct. So if you're talking about the people who knowingly understood, had an overview of the whole operation from beginning to end, very few, maybe not, not probably not more than a few dozen. Um, remember, there's a million people with top secret clearance in America. It's not too hard to find some pretty, you know, bloodthirsty individuals within, within those million people, all sworn to secrecy, 
all liable to go to prison for a very long time if they breathe a word of what they've been up to. A million people. Can, can I just ask everyone yeah. one question before you yes, take that? Um, you mentioned um, that there's already been a real investigation into 9-11. Yes. Um, do you know how much was earmarked initially for that? The biggest terrorist attack in the States, 3,000 people dead. Do you know how much was initially earmarked to uh, do that investigation? I honestly don't, actually. Three million dollars. After lots of badgering and people going, that's just ridiculous, it's not enough, it was reluctantly raised to 15 million dollars. Do you know how much was spent uh, investigating Clinton's sexual infidelities and all the rest of it? Well, honestly, 60 million. Yeah, that's like a real investigation into 9-11, in my ass. Now that's, that's interesting Ridiculous. actually, because I think that's a, a very legitimate criticism, funny enough, um, that it, it was underfunded. I, I do agree that that the is a legitimate criticism. The chair has said that. The vice However, chair said having that. said that, how exactly does that prove the existence of the conspiracy? I mean, that... I'm that just countering proves... your point, you think there's already been a real investigation? Well, time. there was. I mean, there after, been. eventually there was. Reluctantly there was. <laughs> but Delayed. Reluctantly there was. Delayed. 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 Fifteen months? The 9-11 Commission, they, 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 it's very clear from the statements of the American government, from the statements of the FBI, from the statements of NIST, that nobody ever considered that it might be an inside job. Now that's interesting because what you're making out is that the 9-11 Commission report was effectively supportive of the Bush administration. But it wasn't. It was very, very critical of the Bush administration. In fact, it was disastrous for the Bush administration that there was incompetency, etc., etc. So to say that it was in some way beneficial to them it's just nonsense. You should Not read sure. about Zelikow and his massive conflict of interest. I have a very staff. simple point here. The American Air Force stood down for one and a half hour. This is very unusual. Usually when the, an aircraft is out of course, within 10 minutes, two fighters are up tailing them. Interception is it is called. But on that particular day, the American Air Force stood down for one and a half hour, letting these four airliners flying around. Now this is... Usually in the 9-11 Commission report uh, uh, said it is used to incompetence and, and circumstances. Now if you go down the list of all the people who were incompetent accidentally on that day, they have all been promoted. So we have to take questions from the audience. I think well, that young man up there is actually my brother, so I think he's probably <laughs> um, I was wondering what your explanation was. Explosions. But regarding explosions, it's two different stories when you talk about the Twin Towers and Building 7. The Twin Towers, what happened after two weeks, the, the, the fire chief of New York City took every surviving firefighter, 500 in numbers, and asked them to sit down and tell what they experienced on that particular day. They were asked no questions. They do not have a form to fill out. They would just sit in front of the microphone, tell us what you experienced on that day, and they told their story. It's been very difficult to get the transcripts from this, uh, these accounts. But we got them eventually during a Freedom of Information Act inquiry. And when you read through them, 123 of these 500 persons, firefighters, talked about explosions without it being asked, 123 prior to the collapse of the Twin Towers, which was one huge roar of explosions. So by the Twin Towers, I mean, it's beyond discussion. Building 7 is a completely different story because the whole area has been cleared in a distance of five blocks, half a kilometer. There was nobody in there. But people standing outside the um, they could hear <laughs> clap, clap the explosions on a distance. That's one thing. The thing, so there are witnesses, but not so many, and there are a few videos of vi uh, people experience explosions during the day, not too many. But there are explanations for that. One thing is that there was nobody in there to witness them. The second is you can get explosives which are fast, which are very slow, which are very noisy, and which are very quiet. Third, there is a means of cutting columns which makes no noise at all, and that's by the means of thermite. So, but you can see the explosions. If you watched, actually, the, the film I saw, you can see the explosion going from the bottom up. 9-11, actual interception methods for hijacks. Actually, the, the, the rules for interceptions was changed on June 1st, according to which it was the Secretary of Defense who, by person, should give the order for, not for interception, but for shooting down the airplane. Not for interception. This should be automatic, but it didn't happen. For uh, different 
excuses and reasons. But actually the rules were changed. Usually the pilot in the situation has, has the authority to shoot down an airliner if he feels necessary. These rules were changed on June 1st, so you have to contact the Secretary of Defense to personally to get permission for shooting down the airline. Rumsfeld was nowhere to be found at that time. He left his office. We couldn't find the guy. He went out on, on the lawn, actually. That's one thing. And the rules were changed back on September the 12th. Yeah, the smoking gun is, is Bill 7, as what Professor Harrop has, has done his presentation. Um, and NIST have, in 2008, um, confirmed. Uh, it took them a, a long time to actually be forced into the position of confirming free fall, as Professor Harrop um, described, did occur. Um, and we've, we've seen that free fall can only occur if, okay, there's 80 massive columns. Uh, Professor Harrop says not necessarily all of them have to be taken out at the same time, but a, a large number had to be taken out at, at within milliseconds of each other. Um, so do you have an explanation for for, the free fall? for, for, for how, how those um, columns got taken out all within milliseconds of each other? Was it the fires or, or um, what was the cause? Columns, essentially? Um, well, I mean, I'm, in some ways I'm really not qualified to answer that question. It's I, a pretty important question. Well, I, it is an important question, I agree, but in some ways I don't feel um, qualified to answer that question, um, simply because I'm not a scientist. But, but have I'm you not, heard of well, anybody who has would be able to provide any explanation for that, other than controlled demolition? No, um, National Institute of Science and Technology, who um, who were referenced, they did who a... Refused to, who refused to investigate for explosions? Well, yeah, I know they did, because it's a ridiculous theory. That's why they refused. <laughs> no, so, no, so it's ridiculous that, that, that all those columns taken out at the same time, the explosives, that would be a ridiculous um, theory for well, how... What how exactly is your counter-explanation I think, counter -explanation I, I think we've, you've been asked a question regarding your account. Mm -hmm. What is your explanation? Uh, if it was not a controlled demolition, how did they come down? Like that. Well, again, I, again I, I'm not a scientist, so I feel slightly unqualified to answer that question. My response to that <coughs> would simply be to go and reread the NIST report. It's all in there. It says it quite clearly. The, yeah, now, NIST says free fall. Huh? Yes. yes. That, well, it doesn't say free fall. No, it NIST never have, says. NIST, NIST, that's NIST have no explanation for it. They just say it came down from office fires. Well, that's actually, they don't use the term free fall because it didn't. They do. Right, they, they do. do. You're yeah. saying, like, I'm, this is, I'm, I'm correct. If you go on the internet right now, you can go and look it up on your phone. Again, I don't feel qualified to answer this question simply because I'm not a scientist. It's bad academic practice to answer questions that I'm not qualified to answer. Go and look it up on the internet, you'll find the explanation. It's in the report. I don't know why you deny it. It's, it's in the report. For 2.25 seconds, it falls in free fall. No, no, no. Yeah, the free fall is in the NIST report. Okay. <laughs> was it not David Chandler, uh, a high school physics teacher, that got them to correct their report and then they put it in? The free fall. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And David Jones. Chandler. And Steve. Um, I'm Colin Bex. I'm a member of the executive committee of the campaign. Um, I'd like to uh, share my sympathy with um, uh, Mr. I'm hopeless at names, Mr. Shambrook. Um, I would say, as a young man, putting himself forward to try to defend the indefensible is a very good experience for a young lawyer. The email about um, rubbishing the demolition, which you read out, is so rife with uh, puerile and cynical innuendo that it uh, completely demolishes its own case. That, that's in my view. I say this as an architect myself, planner. Um, I'm exempt from the intermediate exam of the... Um, uh, British Structural Engineers Institute. However, I don't regard myself as, as you didn't regard yourself an expert in these matters. But um, from the uh, visual information I saw at the moment of the time on live transmission at the time of the demolitions, I was convinced those buildings uh, didn't go down as a result of the planes. I mean, for a start, they stood, remained standing for, in one case, an hour and 40 minutes, I think, and one for one hour. So there was no question that the planes caused the collapse. So the value of this meeting, which is one of several I've been to, um, has been that to show how critical, if not crucial, it is that there is a reinvestigation. I mean, you've helped all of us in this room have intellectual need to find the answers, the truth yeah. of this matter. Because, unfortunately, 
under the totally corrupt system of government in this country and America, each and every one of us is liable if we do not oppose them. We become, by implication, guilty of allowing the true criminals who are running the show, a lot of them for money, and the people who, um, uh, as you say, none of the, the names of the um, uh, people who, who've done the informal inqu inquiries and investigations themselves have letters after their name, and I can tell you, those who have letters after their name and are paid by a corrupt government will t say what they're told to say. And I think there's every reason for a reasonable man and woman to believe we are in the grip of criminals. So I'm not saying the official explanation is 100% correct. But I'm which one is the official so explanation? How many percent? It's not clear how many percent? Percent? Sorry. Well, the official explanation is simply the idea that 19 hijackers, I mean, you've, you've pretty much stated it, but 19 hijackers, the, tower, um, the towers, the north and south tower yeah, came down. The as third result. building, the one that you've shown us yeah. in the video, how did that one? It, um, it was What's called the, the fall of, yep, yeah, um, actually, I'm the one who's asking sorry. the question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I want to. Sorry. Building 7, I'm talking about Building 7, you say yeah. you can't explain how it collapsed. Well, I can. You how? can't? Yeah, I can. You say you're not an expert. I said I'm not an expert, but that doesn't mean but, I can't but, explain but then, it. What? Huh? I, well, I'm not an expert on the matter, but, but I can, can give you an explanation. Well, I can I can okay. cite the explanation as given by NIST, which is pretty compelling. Which is, based which is on that a, the sky, a, which is that a massive sky, which is that a massive skyscraper, like half a massive skyscraper, collapsed on front of it, causing massive fires. If you go on BBC conspiracy files, you'll find you'll see the fire. It literally spreads like that, literally like no, that. This is figure 315 of the NIST report. Mm -hmm. All these points are lying on a straight line. This is free fall. <laughs> is the word free fall used? Yes. Where? Show no, it. In the text, my friend. This is. Show it. I'm show, it's here. Show it. Page 48. Page okay. 48. <laughs> ah. Okay. Do you believe in testimony delivered on the torture? No. no. A lot of the commission's report is based on that, you know that? Well, it's. Um, that's. I mean, obviously that's wrong. That's, a, again, a very legitimate criticism. However, it is I mean, it, was, it was delivered in front of the 9-11 Commission. Not this true. It in front of the panel. It's not what true. What are you talking it's about? It's not true. Hey. All Shit. the testimony Bullshit. from the CIA comes from a guy called... Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Yeah. And he was tortured 100 and... He was waterboarded 183 times in March 2006. According to one report. Okay. According to one report, report. report. well, the, the, the uh, American media report, that's the official story. There, there is speculation that actually he was a CIA agent all along, and that, and that he was the key CIA man organising the 9-11 attacks. A huge amount of 9-11 Commission report is about the activities of the alleged hijackers prior to 9-11, and they say themselves that the evidence about that largely comes from um, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who they say they weren't given any access to or to his interrogators, and then later it came out that he was tortured. I don't think they actually make that allegation in the 9-11 Commission report, although if they wanted to make trouble for Bush, they certainly could have made that allegation. Thank you. Um, there's a question here. I just want to say, you know, um, there was a tower, I think, in uh, Madrid that burned for 24 hours. It was an absolute inferno, flying, you know, top to bottom. Guess what? It didn't collapse. No building in history, a steel frame structure has ever collapsed because of fire, except on that day when three buildings... Okay. Yeah, so the, the World Trade Center was built in the 60s, mm -hmm. it was very unpopular with tenants, it had very little natural light, very narrow windows, and uh, it was built for a, a, a pre-digital age. So they were not popular with tenants, and many people were... And since they had a lot of asbestos in them, a lot of people were trying to work out how to demolish them, but the cost of demolition of the World Trade Center would have been prohibitive. That's one thing. Secondly, you quoted Barry Jennings. Barry Jennings was actually died in suspicious circumstances. Barry Jennings actually was in Building 7. He claimed he was stepping over dead bodies as he was leaving that building. Uh, second, thirdly, uh, you have to ask who owned the building. The building was just uh, buildings. The World Trade Center complex was owned by uh, an American businessman with foreign connections called Larry Silverstein. And he, he owned those buildings. He bought those buildings just a few weeks before 9-11. And he had the foresight to ensure them against terrorism. And even, he had even more foresight to make sure that he could rebuild on the same land. <laughs> and when he was asked why he decided to buy these buildings, he said 
he had a compelling urge to own the buildings, which is not a very business-like response. <laughs> Most businessmen would only buy a building to make money, not because of any compelling reason. This, the Silverstein gets a weekly phone call from the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu. Now, if you can accuse me of being anti-Semitic, I'm just pointing this out. It's a fact that you can check for yourself. If anybody doesn't believe me, you write this down and you check it yourself. What's that got to do with anything? Well, I'm saying the question about 9-11 is always this. Ki bono? Who benefits? Who benefits from it? And certain groups benefited. The military-industrial complex benefited. Certain countries benefited. Uh, you mentioned about rigging the building for just demolition. Uh, Ace Elevator was a newly formed company that took over from Otis Elevator. Otis had managed the building since it was incepted. However, for some odd reason, a new company based in New Jersey, some rundown building called o uh, uh, Ace Elevator, was given the contract to renovate the lifts of the World Trade Center. How very peculiar that Otis, that had run the show from the very beginning, should be subcontracted out to some fly-by-night. This new Ace Elevator doesn't exist anymore. You don't have to use a uh, cord, de uh, deto cord, to get rid of a building. You can dem demolish it using wireless technology. This technology existed in 2001. So the idea that there's going to be... Another thing is, those buildings were empty at weekends, holidays, and in the evening. And uh, companies moving in and out of the building could very easily have access to the building. So you're trying to tell me, this New York may be the city that never sleeps, but the idea that you can't get workmen in wearing blue overalls in at any time of the day or night to, to prep those buildings for demolition is simply not true. You made some, uh, you made some comments about deto cord, and I'm telling you that you don't have to use detonation cord. ...and to evacuate to safety. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such a terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. Um, I, can I explain that video, please? If you can do it very quickly. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, now, what um, Larry Silverstein said was just pull it. Okay. Pull it refers to the pulling of the firefighters. It does not refer to the pulling of the building. No, it's a no interruptions! interruptions. Excuse me, this is my job. We should not allow it. I will control the crowd as I see fit. Mr. Silverstein and then says they made that decision to pull and then we watched the building collapse. Uh, you mentioned the three million anti-state investigation and I would like to know if you can uh, give us more details about what it has been done with this uh, three million dollars investigation and uh, if you can uh, finish with this question um, I would have another question from Neil. Yeah I mean I, I don't know I do know that was what was initially earmarked um, and I know that there was a whatever complaint by a lot of the um, victim family members um, to actually raise that to a sensible level. 3,000 people died. It took whatever it was, 15 months to actually do an investigation. It's, it's staggering. No, I, I completely agree that that's wrong. I, I'm, there's no disagreement it's, on that one. Yeah. But what, that's what that's evidence of for me is just complete and utter incompetence. If you think I'm here to defend the Bush administration, think again, I'm not. I'm just here to say that it was incompetent and that there's no evidence for conspiracy. Did you have another question for you? Yes, uh, my second question is related to the Twin Towers and I uh, would like to know if, uh, if any simulations or any supposition... But, but if, if you, you're asking if any, any simulations have been carried out for the collapses of the Twin Towers, no. And the NIST report on the Twin Towers does not cover the collapse. Surprise! It doesn't cover it. Their timeline stopped before the, t the, t the towers collapsed. According to the official conspiracy theory, one of these pilots flying 960 kilometers per hour and is just about committing suicide. And just before seconds before impact, he says to his fellow hijacker, "Could you please take the wheel because I have to put throw out my passport." And he rolls down the window and he throws out. <laughs> <laughs> the magic passport is a specific, um, is quite interesting to me. I mean, remember that um, there were thousands of papers found on the streets of um, sort of surrounding the towers um, that had all survived. So yeah, it's possible. Is it strange? Yeah, it's strange. It's really strange. 
What you're essentially suggesting is that the US government, or people within the US government, or people within the CIA, or whoever, they all said, I know, let, I've got a great idea to prove who the hijackers were. Let's chuck a, a passport on the street, hope that somebody spots it, and that will be clear evidence. Nobody will suspect that. Of course, it's a silly narrative. Okay. It's a Thank silly you. narrative you've given yourself. Are all of the family members involved in, you know, are they all unhappy with I don't know. I mean, for a long time I wasn't public about my thoughts. Um, I started to question stuff in December 2001. Um, there are, I'm guessing, other family members like myself in the UK as well as uh, you know, elsewhere. There obviously are a number of um, family members who have already come forward. But this is not about putting forward a theory or counter theory. For me, it's I've got questions. There are lots of things that just don't make sense. And you know, the free fall we've talked about doesn't make sense. I want an answer to that. You know, without going, and I don't want it's not conspiracy stuff, but let me just ask you a bit more um, about the family side. I am in the process of trying to contact some of the UK members because I'm part of a family support group. So maybe in a few months' time I'll be able to answer that question a bit better. But what I do know is, you know, for, for me it took a, a bit of courage to come forward to, to view my, my thoughts about this because I know it's, it's quite, you know, it's heated on both sides for people that. Do believe the official story, but also um, you know people within the actual so-called 9/11, well, you know whatever label we're giving it, 9/11 Truth Movement. There are different theories. I just want questions, and I really want them from the authorities to answer my questions. They're quite simple. They're not that complex. Yeah, you know, they range from simple things like um, you know, can you give me a complete list of the 19 hijackers and proof that they actually boarded all those flights? We have two images of the two chaps who are on um, 11. There are the earlier flight, not actually flight 11. Where are they? Where is you know proper footage of the urge flight, whatever it was, 77, hitting the Pentagon? We know that the FBI confiscated stuff within minutes of all the surrounding area. But where is that footage? You know, we've got those silly four, four frame or five frames eventually. Um, you know, where is the, these 28 redacted pages from the Joint Commission inquiry? Why is so much stuff being held from the families? I mean, I haven't got a comprehensive list with me of all the questions that the families have, but it's big. And that's why I said you know, it was 25 to 30% were answered. And this was a group of, you know, seven, 10 very vocal families. You know, again, that's not all of them, and there are others thinking the same stuff, but not actually actively doing anything about it. Um, you know, I chickened out last, um, September 11th, I was at the memorial, and you know, I was thinking, well, do I ask people now? It's not really appropriate, um, and you know, I didn't. I wish I had, I'd probably have an answer for you, but it, it, it's, it's a tricky thing to do because you're trying to deconstruct people's just you've been brainwashed so much of what went on, and like, you know, the question I put to Edward where's the evidence for the official story? And there is very little evidence. But it doesn't matter, that, you know, that's something that's like, but that's what people think, whether you're a victim, family member, or otherwise. And to, to get people to sort of just think, step back from that is actually quite hard because we just, that's what we, we think happened, that's what we've been told happened. And then you start questioning it, you start peeling back the layers, and you sort of think, this isn't, this is odd, this doesn't make sense. And, and some people are further down that path than, than others. Um, I don't know where I am. I mean, I went around in circles with certain things that I was reading, what to believe, what not to believe. The two things that totally focused me on having, I guess, the courage to come forward were Building 7 and Free Fall. Now, like I said, you don't need to be an expert to actually know enough physics to know that there's something very wrong with the official story. And this do mention it, the, the Free Fall for 2.25 seconds, but give no explanation. The second thing, which was to totally deconstruct and rip apart any preconceived ideas I may, may or may not have, have had about my government, my military, my intelligence agencies, was that Northwoods document. It's frightening what's in there. Now this is what was being thought of uh, in 1962 by a very high level of people in the US government. Now they didn't go ahead with it, and I'm not saying that 9-11 was following anything like that, or even following template stuff on it, but it's to give people the idea that this is what people in power are thinking 
doing, and in this particular case, it was a pretext for war. That's all. And there were the two things that made me think, okay, all the list of questions I have, this is enough for me to just come forward and, yeah, talk about 9-11. I mean, I just want it reinvestigated, to be honest. But within that speech, I, I found it quite interesting that you managed to implicate about 20 different organisations hun with hundreds and thousands of people. I mean, just thinking about it logically, don't you think that's strange that hundreds of people, thousands of people have, haven't, who haven't come forward? I mean, remember that the same government, the US government, couldn't even cover up the burglary of a little hotel three miles down the road for more than a year. Don't you find it strange that you've implicated so many people? No, not, not implicating them. It's like Ian said, it, it's going to be elements of them. Don't forget also how the military is constructed and how it works. You, you don't question going up the channel. That happens in business as well. You don't question stuff. But I, I, don't, I don't want to get into that. I have questions that haven't been answered. And the people I've spoken to, counter-terrorism people, ex-intelligence people, have said to me, false flags are very, very common technique. They're effective. Okay. Can, we take, can we take the other two questions and then come, you can answer there, just so we can get them in. You had a question? Um, yes. Um, obviously, Ian touched on it earlier about money as well. Um, Carlisle Group. Um, is, is the allegation that, um, that, that there was a demolition job on the Twin Towers as well? Because if there, if there is, then there is, um, this comes to my understanding as a young physicist, that um, some metals, when they get to a high enough temperature, they change their phase, which can cause weakening of the material, to, which could cause a collapse. Which, which if that, you know, that, that is a possible explanation of what happened, but that doesn't explain, of course, what happened in, in Building 7. Yes, the, 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 the truth is painful. It hurts a lot that the lies are killing us. I will not comment on the money thing, but on this, about the Twin Towers, yes, they, but they were not demolished. They were blown up from the top down. Just watch. Have you ever watched the action? So he was controlled explosion, of, uh, sorry, controlled demolition on the Twin Towers? Yeah, no, but not even a demolition. They were blown up from hmm. the top down. Just watch the video. Exactly. But, but, but by what means? Explosives. Okay. Definitely. Thank you. Just watch the video. You'll see girders and beams being thrown up and out 100 and 200 meters, 10, 12, 15 tons. Gravity is moving downwards. You should know that as a physicist. <laughs> but what you're seeing is that, that, all, that all the debris is being thrown up and out. Mm. Just watch. Mm. And go to David Chandler. Remember that. Okay. David Chandler's work. Well, very... Not really. Um, from the idea that they actually managed to plant um, explosives in both towers and then without anybody seeing, despite this being a massive undertaking, a huge, huge undertaking that would have been necessary, then they managed to, um, some, yeah, they somehow managed to do all this without anybody noticing. Then the planes that smashed into it didn't destroy any of the complex demolition setup and then somehow they managed to blow up the building by uh, some guy named Igor, I'm assuming, or something, like some evil guy who's timing the explosions perfectly. I mean, I, I just don't know where to start. You're a man of science, and yet you can't use any logic whatsoever. It's remarkable. Thank you. Um, Ian. Well, this, this is the voice of denial, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and there are explanations for all these things, but it, get, it does get complicated. And I don't blame you for not, you know, you haven't read the right materials. Um, on well, the I've issue of, I, I, I'd like to take the no, lady, uh, the, the money, a huge amounts of money were made out of it. They, I haven't followed the money trail that much. Stories about gold being removed just before the attacks. Um, intriguing, you know, not central. Um, yes, the Carlisle group had Bin Laden on the board, one of the Bin Ladens on the board. They made a lot of money out of it. They were a sort of holding company. The, the one point about Northwoods is that they were going to follow it up with a terrorist campaign in, southern, in the southern states, and they do make it very clear that that was going to involve the murder of Americans. Um, they, remember, this is a document signed by all the Joint Chiefs of Staff and submitted formally to the White House for approval. So, you know, they're, they're not going to... They're going to be a little bit careful about what they're saying, I would have thought, you know. I mean, supposing Kennedy had turned on them. I mean, Kennedy could have called the FBI and had them all arrested for this. Um, he certainly could have done if they 
openly proposed murdering 300 people in a plane, which might well be what the true plan was. Cheney has actually outlined his legal defence, should he ever be accused of masterminding this. And that is, he has said, we are all now participants in the war on terror. So, you know, military people do sacrifice, whole sa you, you know, you can sacrifice a whole battalion if, to the greater good of winning a war. So I'm afraid to say, you know, I'm, I've been accused of being callous. Well, I'm now going to suggest that Dick Cheney, Cheney is extremely callous oh, and you. that he has now created, you know, that, that's your answer, basically. Matt. Barry Jennings and the pulling, uh, there was no one in the building. Barry Jennings and, and, and the, his operative, uh, uh, his co-worker went up there. They found no one in the building whatsoever, no firefighters, no nothing, and they were rescued by firefighters. The firefighters had been pulled out well before, well before that pulling, so it wasn't that. OBL, uh, uh, Osama Bin Laden, re he admitted, uh, far from admitting it, in fact, within days of 9-11, he actually gave an interview to Al Jazeera, categorically denying having anything to do with it. And within a, uh, another couple of weeks, he gave a, a, the same interview to a couple of Pakistani newspapers. Now, if he'd have done it, he'd have been proud of it. He'd say, yeah, and we're going to do it again till you get out of uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, just a sec, there's a few more. <laughs> William Rodriguez. Right, um, he, he, he was made a, 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 a national hero in the United States. He saved so many people. He saved about 15 himself, and he was instrumental in opening doors and showing farmen, helping farmen show them where to go, opening doors for them. He was made a national hero. Now, the NIST report, when he was, he was being interviewed, he had to give his interview behind closed doors. And he wasn't even mentioned in the NIST report. And the other, the other, I forget how many, I'm not sure if it was 87 uh, witnesses he had who wanted to speak. I'm not sure if it was eight, so it might have been 27. I'm not sure how many it was. But not one of them was asked to give evidence. And we one need more, to keep this very just one more, yes. one more very quick one. Um, there were, regarding it, it would take a lot of people going in there and the place was open 24 hours. Far from it, between about two and I think it was five o'clock, uh, a, a lady saw lots of vans going in and she didn't know what they were doing. And obviously, if the security uh, were okay with them, you know, like um, part of the plan, then that was, she couldn't understand why all these were going in. And thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last question. Very last question. Yeah. You know there were, there were lots of workers. You, you keep on asking, how could they come in and yeah. face all this? Yeah, exactly. All this so your, your evidence that they placed thermite in the no. building is that they you, renovated you, you the lift? No, you nobody ran in and out of the building. Yes, there were. They also powered down in the building. Yes, you <laughs> Thank you very much to everybody for your discussions tonight.